TCA winner, a two-time Critics' Choice winner, Golden Globe and Screen Actors Guild nominee, star of Orphan Black, Tatiana Maslany, all those, all that prestige. And my first question to you is, what did that scorpion taste like? <laughs> um, like uh, candy, like fondant. He was like made of the sweetest candy. It was the best. It was one of the best things I got to do. I was super <laughs> hyper afterwards, though, because it was really sugary. Crunchy too, I imagine. Really crunchy. They, they, it was actually amazing how they built him because they had to make him strong enough to like not collapse before I chewed him, but also chewable. So it was, uh, it was. I think it was like a bit of an experiment for for the props people. Well, it's been a fun experiment. They get to like try all these these scorpions to get the best tasting one, I guess. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Exactly. <laughs> um, well. Uh, Speaking of though, we did get to meet um, a new a new clone earlier, uh, or I guess last week, Crystal. But mm -hmm. I want to get on to uh, I want to ask you about this because I've I've heard some things uh, not to hone in on it, but on the scorpion thing that you kind of you know it's supposed to be like Helena's spirit animal or, or, or something um, that kind of guides her through a lot um, and made kind of a splash this season. But it, it it's a character that you also voiced and did all of the like. The, the small little noises that came out of it was that yeah. your idea or or were they always has it always was it always intended for you to do it I don't know I, I mean it wasn't my idea but I was so excited to get to do it um John Fawcett I think was like you're gonna play the scorpion and I was like all right <laughs> like, I can't even imagine what that's gonna be like but let's let's try it um and so he he's one of the co-creators of the show and he sat in on the ADR sessions when we when we finally did the voice um, because we added it all obviously in post. So, um, so we all kind of didn't know what the scorpion was going to sound like. And then, and then I threw some stuff up in the air and we kind of saw what stuck and, and, and played with, you know, whatever, like dinosaur sounds, whatever dinosaur sounds are, but like, you know, reptile kind of sounds and, and cat sounds and this idea of like the scorpion kind of being like a little girl voice almost. Um, because that's, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, what Helena's kind of imprinted in her head. So it was, you know, anything with Helena in that world is, is always super fun to, to play around with because there's so much room for, you know, your imagination to kind of go nuts. Well, I know for each clone, you, you get into kind of get into character by, uh, listening to, to some kind of music. I imagine for the Scorpion, there was no music that you needed to to break into character on, just maybe like watch Jurassic Park or something. Exactly, it was just a theme song from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, well, when we last spoke, um, we talked about that infamous uh, clone dance party scene that, uh, you know, uh, and you'd mentioned how everybody has been getting more comfortable in doing these multiple clone scenes um, and that we may see more of them as we go. And then, you know, we cut to the season three opener and we get that really cool, like, um, you know, that first scene where, where it's the, the kind of the dreamscape baby shower sequence of the four main clones. Was that a blast to shoot? Yeah, I mean, again, that, you know, that's stuff that's happening kind of in the dreamscape of Helena. So there was a lot of room for us to play with the images that she had in her head, you know, that, how she saw Alice and how she warped Sarah into like, basically just being made of leather, you know, or or like, made Kasima wear her Ukrainian traditional outfit. Like there, you know, it was, it was really fun to get to kind of play in that arch, in that arch world. Um, and I think it's a cool direction that the show has took um, in, in third season in terms of kind of going into the internal dreamscape a bit more. And we did that in episode six as well with, with the Beth flashback that there's, um, that we got inside of the characters' heads more than than we had in in previous seasons, and the scorpion is is another example of that. Now, um, is it uh, does it get any easier to do those things though? I mean, I know you had mentioned before when you would when you would do these multiple clone scenes that it, it could take up to like you know fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hours on set. Is it still that, or are you guys do you move at a more rapid pace? I think because we add more difficult things to those scenes we we try to kind of push ourselves every time whether it's the amount of clones or it's the 
the kind of shots that we use or the amount of movement or the amount of passing of things, we, we tend to sort of over overdo it in terms of complicating things for ourselves. And I, I think, so the days just, they're, they're always long, you know, um, it's never kind of gotten easier. It's just gotten, we've gotten better at doing them, but, but then we sort of try to push ourselves to, to make them harder, I guess, you know, and, and more, more exciting to watch, you know? So, so that scene took, I think it was two solid days of shooting, but then we also did, you know, pick up shots when I would be in Allison gear. So that, because Allison was sort of separate from the rest of the clones for, for sections of that. So we did her coverage separate on, on another day. It was really weird in that scene that um, it, it was, I guess, Helena's uh, kind of dream sequence, but the baby shower itself looked like it was something that so much that Allison would have put together and not very not Helena. Well, so like, what does that say about Helena and Allison's <laughs> internal workings? Like maybe not so far off <laughs> from each other, actually. Right. Um, my personal favorite scenes are the ones like we just saw recently in, in Community of Dreadful Fear and Hate, the last episode that just aired, where you're a clone and you have to pretend to be another clone, like, uh, you know, where, where Cosima was at the, um, at the, uh, the speaking event for, um, uh, for, I'm sorry, not Rachel, for, uh, for Allison. 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 And um, she had to pretend for a bit to be Allison up there on the stage. I, I, is it harder to do those multiple clone scenes or is it harder to be you going as a clone and then having to pretend to be another clone in, in a way that you think that other clone would be that? I don't, I don't even know what I'm, yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying. Um, I, think, I think it is the latter that's more difficult. I think, I think the... Um, uh, yeah, there's, it's more of a sort of, it messes with your my head a bit more to do those clone, like clone on top of clone kind of disguised things, especially when it's somebody like Cosima, who's not really an actor or a chameleon or any of these things, you know, she's sort of like not really up for it, you know? So, so there's, there's, a, there's a difficulty in, in really uh, fooling anybody. Uh, that she is Allison because she's just terrible at it, <laughs> you know, like she doesn't know, she doesn't know how to do it, you know, the way that Sarah knows how instinctively or that Allison has been trained to do, you know, so, so it's, um, but, but I love, I love those, those um, kind of, those scenes, because they're, they're so much fun for me too, as much as they're difficult and complicated, they're, they're juicy stuff to play. Now, uh, this season, we got to learn um, also a lot about the the new clones that we saw at the end of last season, the caster clones, which were much different than the clones that you play, uh, more because it seems like they were gathered uh, in a, or they were, they were kind of confined together and already had that kind of built-in relationship, whereas your clones are all separated and just barely meeting each other or have, you know, are starting to meet other ones. Um, so you guys don't all have that, uh, I guess, kind of collaboration that the caster clones have. Uh, was there any, any, uh, any, clone envy there because you're like gosh if, if they would have already all known each other it would have been so much easier to get yeah. these girls together yeah, the, the leader clones are super jealous of the caster clones um <laughs> no i think i think like i was i was i was daunted for ari in terms of the the kind of ta tackling that that kind of inspiration because for me i had the fortune of like accents or the fact that they didn't know each other so you know different different sort of um, mannerisms and different kind of upbringing so there was a lot of room to to make them different whereas Ari had this unique challenge of of the fact that they were all raised in the same you know little test tube situation they or petri dish or whatever they they um they couldn't be super different you know so the differences had to be super subtle and and I think he did an amazing job of of subtly making them different and subtly, um, diff you know, distinguishing them from each other, which is, you know, infinitely more complicated and nuanced than than being like, you know, Sarah versus Allison, because there's a there's a huge physical and verbal or audio difference, you know, there than than between the the, the caster clones. Now, in these, um, so we've only seen up to episode eight this season so far. The last two are are coming um, this week and next week. Um, 
of those first eight, because I, I don't like spoilers, I, I don't want to know anything about it, but in those first eight, was there any any scene there or anything that was the most challenging that maybe didn't, like, I know that the opening scene of the, of the premiere was probably challenging, because like I said, it was a two-day shoot, but was there anything in there that was equally or more challenging to, to film this season? Because you had so much going on with these clone battles and everything else that, that happened. I think for me, the, one of the, the scene that really sticks out was... Um the twerking no <laughs> the uh, <laughs> no the uh, in that episode though the the sarah and beth scene to me that was like you know we we hadn't really i hadn't really played beth before we didn't really know who she was yet um and there were sort of ideas of who she could be and you know sarah definitely had an idea of who beth was and art had kind of um alluded to who she might be but but she was kind of a mystery to, to all of us, myself included. So to get to play her with very little knowledge of who she was, and, and also, again, in the dreamscape where there's a bit of room for kind of, you know, uh, more imagination and, and less kind of concrete realism. Um, I, it was just really fun and, and challenging. And, and thankfully, I had um, Helen Shaver, who's one of my favorite directors uh, that I've ever gotten to work with, and she does our show, and, and she she worked that scene with us, me and Catherine, who plays my clone double. She, mm. she and I, the three of us really, you know, had a lot of time to, to make that real and make that work, and, and Aubrey Nealon, who wrote the script, just wrote a beautiful scene for us. Like, it just, it was just, it was at, at once the most uh, challenging, but also one of the most rewarding things we've we've been able to shoot in terms of from from my perspective on on that show now um speaking of the show i've heard you mentioned before everybody um seems to to automatically place this sci-fi label on on orphan black but i've heard you say before that you think it's more of kind of a character driven drama with a bit of comedy splashed in there mm -hmm. and and horror and i I'd, 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 i agree and i'd love you to kind of maybe explain a little bit more about that rather than just you know, it's strict label as a sci-fi. Yeah, I think it's limiting to say it's a sci-fi. I mean, I think the conceit is, you know, is a sci-fi. The, the sort of setup is a sci-fi. But, but what it allows us to do is then explore characters in a really kind of um, grounded way. Um, and I've always looked at it like that. I mean, when I first got the script... Uh, it, it was just about the characters for me. You know, the whole, the sort of mystery and the, the, the you know, Dyad and, and Lita and Castor and all these different sort of big corporations or whatever, these experiments, to me are just like a way of exploring humanity, right? And like, and like picking apart what it is to be a woman nowadays or what it is to be, you know, part of a corporation or this idea of corporations having human like that they are human beings you know what I mean like there's there's all this kind of interesting mm -hmm. stuff and I think I think it is a sci-fi um I think sci-fi does that I think sci-fi always looks at you know society and and what's happening nowadays and sort of looks at it in a certain way but but I think our show has kind of I don't know I I wouldn't say that it transcended sci-fi I just don't think it can be labeled and I think that's also one of our themes is like you can't kind of put one label on any one human being or any one experience, you know, that, that there are so many opportunities for things to be different depending on what your choices are, or what your uh, upbringing is, or the things you can't decide. Um, so, so yeah, so I think it's just, it just is, I think sci-fi is like become a weird, like derogatory term, even though it's not, but like, I just think it's, I don't think it's just that. I agree. Um, you know, you're actually drifting a bit. Could you center yourself just a little bit? <laughs> <I'm> like... <laughs> you're almost out of frame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, here, so that then, then if I move over. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it, it seems like your your uh, your fellow colleagues, actors, um, kind of agreed because you were nominated recently at the Screen Actors Guild Awards for um, you know best female actor in a drama series. How was I was going to the show and attending that. I know you were there and, and you know, you got a big, nice little round of applause when, when your clip came up. Um, how was that whole experience? It was, it was amazing. Um, it was the most uh, chilled out event like that I'd ever been to because I guess, cause it was all just actors and, and 
there was something communal about it. There was something less kind of formal and less daunting. Um, and also just, it was amazing to be in the room with, you know, um, everybody from Birdman like sat over there at the table and, and, you know, just, we were sat next to Michael, what's his, Math Michael McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> Michael McConaughey, his brother, his, his young brother. Um, but His you know, clone brother. His clone brother, who he sends to award shows for him. Um, no, it was, it was amazing. It was totally amazing and a huge honor for me because so many people I look up to are part of SAG you know, and, and are in the union and, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm not a SAG member, like I'm an actor member from Canada. So it's, it's kind of cool to be included in that club. Well, um, speaking of, of clubs to be included in, um, the Emmy nominations are coming out in a few weeks. Uh, you already know the ruckus behind you. You've heard it a million times that, you know, everybody's wishing for you to get an Emmy, a very deserved Emmy nomination. Um, and we discussed it a couple months back. Uh, so Emmy, you do have your chance to write the ship on Tatiana here this season, just to, just to let you know. But um, <laughs> if you, uh, if you are nominated for, for drama um, lead actress, you have to submit an episode to Emmy voters that displays your best from season three. Do you have do you have one in my it, it may be the finale or, or the next episode and, and again we haven't seen them yet so we don't know but do you have one that kind of stands out um, through the first half of the season or maybe of those two that you would submit? I mean I don't know I, I haven't seen the last two yet um, but I, I was I was really happy with how 308 came out with Crystal um, that was a really fun episode for me in terms of what all the all the clones are kind of going through and and episodes uh, 306 um which is the kind of um which which is with the beth flashback and um and uh god what else the twerking i think that just submit just submit that <laughs> just that just that that should be the emmy clip if, if you know what it is just, just <laughs> <the> twerking <laughs> um and, and crystal i heard she was she was maybe based on or, or based on a friend that 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 you have is that it that? was more she was based on like things that me and my friends say as like a joke that this the the incarnation of crystal actually comes from there's this tv series called um Kroll show where uh there's an amazing sketch on it called publicity which is two publicists played by nick Kroll and jenny slate and i just like am obsessed with those two i think they're so amazing and would just pretend to be them, like do the voice, do that crystal voice kind of like on set, you know, just as a joke. And and uh, then John and Graham were like, oh, well, there's a character that we'd love that to be. Like, we'd like to take that improv that you're doing and just turn it into a, a character. Um, so it was really fun to take her from this kind of sort of dismissive, you know, character, this sort of like characterization, this stereotype, and then find find what the true beating heart is underneath of that sort of fake exterior you know because because I know women like that I know women who speak like that and who um think that that's how the best way to move through the world and and you know that, that they're obviously there's obviously more going on than than what they're willing to show us so so I was really interested in kind of digging in to to see what it was <clears throat> well, we're going to go on a, um, a few, end on a few fun questions. Um, well, maybe this one's not too fun, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, Stop which, camera and you'll know. <laughs> uh, which clone um, would you say is the hardest for you or most challenging for you to play? Um, God, I don't know. Uh, this season, Rachel was really difficult because of the aphasia and the sort of... Um, just the difficulties that she was facing were 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 a lot of a lot to take on, um, but uh, but I really enjoyed it as well. I think that they're all difficult depending on what they're sort of going through. And um, which one do you which clone do you feel closest to on a personal level? Is one you have more of a connection with than the others? Um, I don't know. I guess the, I've got a connection to all of them for different reasons, but. Um, uh, Allison weirdly feels the most comfortable in my body sometimes. Uh, 
I don't know why, uh, <laughs> what that says about me, but I think there's definitely like a large part of Allison in me. Well, you, you love the theater and she does too, right? So I love a theater, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and final question. Um, so you yourself has, have guest starred in, in you know, in, in shows like, like Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. which, which TV shows do you think each of the, the main clones would guest star in? <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Um, Cosimo would have been on Breaking Bad if that had, if that, you know, if she got on the bandwagon soon enough, early enough. Uh, Helena might be on like, um, <laughs> I want to say like a children's TV show. Like a, like a, like a, was Romper Room anything in the States? Do you know what Romper Room is? Or was that yeah, yeah. Mr. Dress Up? That doesn't yeah. make any sense. Sesame Street? Yes. She'd be Helena on Sesame Street. She'd be like, she'd be a Muppet on Sesame Street. Um, Rachel would be on House of Cards. Um, Allison would be on like her own like cooking show. So like, a, like a ripoff of like Martha Stewart or something like that. Uh, Sarah would be on This Is England if it, if it still existed, the TV series. And who else do we have? Crystal. Yeah. Crystal would be on like des uh, whatever the Secret Housewives of Beverly Hills. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I think you got them all. I, I think the most interesting to watch would be the the Helena as a Muppet on Sesame yeah. Street. Because I was thinking like maybe Orange is the New Black or something, but no, I, no. I like your idea much better. Cookies on on Sesame Street or something, and like talking to babies at their level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well. um, Thank you again uh, for joining us and um, best of luck with the uh, Emmy nomination season coming up and congratulations on season four of or Orphan Black and this season. It's been um, another great one. Uh, so hope to join, hope you join us again soon. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks so much.